All right, welcome. Uh, put 5.3 bisectors and triangles at the top. So our objective today is to identify properties of perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. All right, so the first thing that we have is we have some vocab. So you are going to write down uh, this little paragraph right here, that little paragraph. So basically, when three or more lines intersect at one point, they are concurrent. So we have three lines come together, they are concurrent. Where they come together at, that's called the point of concurrency. So we're going to be using that, uh, those new vocabs quite a bit, so make sure that you have that written down. All right, and then we're actually not going to write this key concept. We're actually going to write uh, what's below it right here. So I want you to uh, write these two paragraphs down and then draw this picture off here to the right too. So it says the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle is called the circumcenter of the triangle. So basically, when we have uh, three points that come together, and if they are perpendicular bisectors, so the three points that come together, if they're perpendicular bisectors, basically what is that going to cause? That's going to be the middle of a circle. So even though they come together right here in the middle, right there, if we draw a circle around it, they would be considered circumscribed about the triangle. Okay, so we know that they're perpendicular bisectors, and where they come together, that's actually going to be the center of the circle, which is called circumscribed, circumscribed about uh, the triangle. All right, so let's uh, let's do a quick example here, really quick, to kind of show uh, what that looks like. It'll be a little more, more clear when we do an example. All right, so problem number one right here. So uh, it says, uh, what are the coordinates of the circumcenter of the triangle with vertices 0, 6, 0, 0, and 4, 0? All right, so this problem is going to be a little bit easier because um, when we graph this right here, make sure you draw the graph, we have a perfectly uh, vertical and a perfectly horizontal line. So remember, uh, when we're finding the circumcenter, uh, what we need though is we need perpendicular bisectors. That's really important when we are doing this though. So it's where three lines come together um, and they are all perpendicular bisectors. Okay, So we have this line right here so this makes it really easy for us to find the bisector of this line. I'll highlight this line right here this makes it easy, really easy to find this line right here because to find the bisector we just need to find half of it so to find, I'll erase that right there to find half of this line right here, half of 6 is going to be 3 so it's going to be, that's the middle right there and then if I'm trying to find half of this line right here, half of 4 would be 2 right there so that would be my bisector and then for it to be perpendicular, if this is a uh, vertical line, a perpendicular line is going to be a line that goes straight across. That would cause it to be 90 degrees. And for this to be perpendicular with this line, again, it would go straight up and straight down. All right, so the circumcenter is where these two lines come together, which is that point right there which is going to be 2 comma 3 so 2 comma 3 is my circumcenter and uh, we could uh, remember it's three lines that are all concurrent with the third line but because we know that two of the lines are there we know that that third line is also going to go through that point too okay and so the reason that we do this though is that because if we were to draw a circle and let's see if I can do it with my tools right here. Uh, if we were to draw a circle where all of these points, oh, that worked out really well. Pretty well. Where all of these uh, vertices points are on the circle, that one's not quite on. Uh, this circumcenter where those three lines come together is going to be the middle of the circle. Okay, is the circumcenter of the circle. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Let's have you write this down right here, uh, these three pictures. It says the circumcenter of a triangle can be inside, on, or outside a triangle. So it all depends on what type of triangle you have. 
if we have an acute triangle, that circumcenter where the three all come together is right there. So if we draw a circle around like that, that right there is going to be my middle. If we have a right triangle, it's going to be on it right there. So again, if we have a circle, what was it that circle? It's going to be right there. And if we have an obtuse triangle, it's going to be outside of it. So it would look something like uh, something like that right there, where these three points and they all come. Ooh, that was a bad one, because that wouldn't be the middle of my circle. Uh, but you understand the point. So uh, it all depends on what type of triangle you have uh, on where that circumcenter is going to be. Okay. All right. So we got one more thing to cover. Let's do that really quickly. All right. So our last new vocab is going to be this right here. And what you can do though is you actually don't need to write this down right here. Let's just write down uh, this little paragraph and this picture right here. Okay. So uh, what's happening in this picture? So the point of congruency of the angle bisector of this triangle is called the end center of the triangle. So for any triangle, the center, the end center is always inside the triangle. So you see how it's inside right there. So in the diagram, the points X, Y, and Z are equidistance from P and the end center of triangle ABC. So P is the center of the circle that is inscribed. Inscribed means it's inside, obviously inside the triangle. Okay. So again, you don't need to have this down as long as you have this paragraph and that picture right there that has the most important thing that we need. Okay, so let's do uh, one last problem that we got right here. All right, so uh, our last problem right here is we are trying to identify and use the end center of the triangle. So we are trying to find what uh, GD is. So the first thing that we do is when we look at this picture, uh, we notice that each three of these lines are all angle bisectors. So we see that CG is an angle bisector because of those lines. Uh, AG is an angle bisector because of those lines. And BG is an angle bisector as well. So we just talked about if they're all angle bisectors, then this point G right here is going to be my end center. So we're going to write uh, point G point G is the end center is the end center okay and so because we know that's the end center if we were to uh, inscribe a circle around these three vertices around something that looks like that that was terrible uh, let's try it one more time. Uh, if I did something like a circle, uh, something like that, and we knew that G was the middle, well, all of these points right here would, all these lines right here would be congruent. They're like little radii that are coming. If that's the middle of the circle and it's inscribed, each of these right here would be congruent to each other. And so because they're congruent to each other, we know that GE right here is going to equal GF. So if we're trying to solve for X, we would do 2X minus 7 equals X plus 4. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides. This is going to give me 2 uh, oops, this is going to give me X right there. Uh, X and Let's say at the same time as I'm doing that, I can add 7 to both sides, which means that x is going to equal 11. But it wants to know what GD is. So if I know x is 11, well, I don't have GD up here, but I know that all three of these lengths are all congruent. So I can plug it into any one of these, and there it's going to be the same, because all lengths are the same. So if we find uh, GF right here, GF equals 11 plus 4, which is going to equal GF is going to equal 15. And if these two lines are both congruent, 
then we know that GD right here is going to also equal 15. So that would be my answer right there. Okay, so uh, a lot of new vocab that we had um, and a few problems that we did, um, but we'll make sure that we go over it in class. Uh, make sure you just have all these examples, pictures written down, and then we'll do some more problems in class. All right, see you guys soon.